I'm on the road to Sundown National Park. Got to love that tree. It's not the smoothest of roads. That's private property and they're certainly making sure that people know. I would say the video surveillance part would be bullshit. No hunting, well at least violators won't be shot. Although it would be hard to shoot them unless you wanted to get yourself into a gun metal. Anyway, we're going up there. Kangaroo. And there's a little joey. Well, not all that little. Too big to fit in the pouch anymore. Hey, Mum. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's a, quite a few actually, if you look between the trees. They're well camouflaged, that colour, when they stand upright in trees like that. Sundown National Park. A rugged landscape, high trap rock country along the Queensland New South Wales border has been carved by the Severn River. The remote character of Sundown National Park and Sundown Resources Reserve, 16,000 hectares in total, is maintained by keeping development to a minimum. Mount Lofty Circuit, 32 kilometres return, allow two to three days return. Of course you can't take dogs with you and anyway nice is so old you wouldn't last it on those rugged bush tracks. Caution there are leeches in this pool. Let's look for a short one where I can leave the dogs behind in the van. Permanent water hole two kilometers return. Might do that one. Allow one hour. Following the track from the information that, uh, the water hole is permanent even in the driest times and is approximately five meters deep making it perfect for swimming. From the rock cliffs near the mouth of Uli, Uline Creek tiny azure kingfishers may be seen. Yeah I've seen some of those. They're so small they're not much bigger than hummingbirds. And at dawn or dusk, platypus often surface as they feed. We'll do that walk. I'll just finish my coffee and my breakfast. Gently sloping, well defined. Yeah. Reasonable level of fitness and ankle supporting footwear required. So I'll put on the hiking boots. One reason I would not wear sandals going into the bushes for snakes. Far too easy for a snake to bite you on the ankle. Um, plus of course twigs and sharp sticks can get in there and um, give you quite nasty wounds as well as the very basic thing of no ankle support. Okay we're done let's go. You guys stay here. Yeah it's a rough enough track and you do need the ankle support because of these rocks and things you can so easily just turn your ankle over. I love the way these flowers are in the rock, growing in the rock. That river there is the Severn River. You can just see it through the trees. I 
I love how when a tree falls across the track the rangers come along and just chainsaw the part that's across the track and take that away and leave the rest of the of the tree there and of course they should why why would they want to take the whole tree away it's all part of the ecology so there's the seven river it's a better view I remember this river about 10 years ago during the drought when the drought was I mean full-on and the river wasn't running that was a dry creek bed very rocky bed river bottom and you could just walk across to the other side narrow track rough edges do you have to watch where you're going it's a fair fall the vine forms an arch Not much shade for it though. It's very wide at the moment. It's broken its banks. See all those living trees in the middle? They're normally out of the water. That's a nice view, isn't it? Two branches of the Seven River meeting. More than two branches. It's really running in flood, isn't it? Yes, I see. I see. It's going to be rock hopping across the water. Carrying a thousand dollar cam a thousand dollar a twelve hundred dollar camera in one hand. So if I fall, I'll be protecting the camera before I'll be protecting my body. <laughs> Damn it. I didn't fall but I did slip. And, uh, yeah, the water got into the boots. That's okay. Let's keep going. This is the permanent water hole. So in times of drought, this never dries up. And as the droughts that cause the Severn River to dry up can last seven, eight, even ten years, this, well, no, it says it's five metres deep, but it must have some form of replenishment coming down from the hills up there. Because after a few years it would just dry up, surely. The water is warm, I can tell you that from having walked in it. <laughs> and it would be great for swimming. The live tree tells you that the water is not normally over the roots of this tree so even here it's high I'm not sure where the normal shoreline would be for this water hole so at dawn and dusk you could see platypus here very peaceful isn't it time to go back walk through that creek I'm obviously not capable of walking over the creek on the rocks and get back to the dogs.
various colours of lichen. Now this is how it's supposed to be done, which I didn't do coming the first time. You step on submerged rocks. It means you've got to search for the rocks. They're there. If you miss them, well it's well over ankle height, the water. In a national park, destroying or damaging an anthill by using sticks is illegal. Now what sort of a pathetic dickhead would want to do that anyway? I guess people who like to destroy things. And they should not be in national parks. Do you like how that rock is balancing on the water's edge? Normally it would not be anywhere near the water's edge. But with the river at this level, it looks quite good, doesn't it? 